Good morning, Trumptopia. I'm your host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Today's episode, already forgot the title. Just kidding. Not kidding. Here it comes. A further draining of the swamp? Theoretical question. How many resigned in protest resignations would it really take to change the world? Thanks for tuning in, friends. I'm your host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Lots of uh, swamp agents. I mean no disparity. Lots of people in lots of offices seem to be honorably discharging themselves of the onerous duty of staying at the desk, staying at the helm of their uh, chosen responsibilities within the system as means of protest. And I truly, genuinely ask you the question. In a world where we genuinely feel burnt out by the way politics is. Let's not even go to extremes calling it any given name. I don't want to get accused or sued by anybody. I'm here to share my opinion, and I will use foul language and mature content uh, references to, you know, intense things, but I don't want to be accused of just bad-mouthing people just because, because I don't think I do that. But in a world where we wonder, where is this all creeping towards? What might it be like in a generation if it just all went and continued unchecked. And I mean, you know, by acts of God and forces of nature and changes of history and and cultural self-expression of the masses, of the plurality. Um, The world is always changing, right? There's not even, it's not a question of how do we change the world? It's it's, how do we uh, focus our awareness, efforts, and consent towards manifesting a change we will all not only like slash agree with slash also won't be, you know, toxically damaged and traumatized by. Uh, What would it take? Good. Mr. Zeppo, you already know that part. Let's proceed. As one industry professional pointed out to me recently, you don't need to play that pre-recorded intro at the beginning of every show. It's long, and it's a little annoying. And for those of us who've heard it, heard it once, we don't really want to hear it a thousand more times. And it's not like it's Netflix where you can like fast forward through the bit. Um, And I'm like, nah, you're right, but I can also uh, sound engineer my own show a little better because I am trained in professional sound engineering. Mm, Surprise, surprise. Uh, And I do have some, not very, I wouldn't say like high end by any stretch of the imagination, not to disparage anybody because it's, you know, neither is it low end, but I have some moderate level experience behind sound boards and sound engineering type thingamabobbers, technical term, ask anybody in the industry. Uh, I digress. Here we are, friends, in a world sliding towards Trumptopia. And I say that with, uh, with no intent to offend anyone. But as, as a sort of weird question mark warning flag of questioning, is it good? What would it be like? And also, from a place of parody, 
and uh, artistic liberty to express my own dystopian sci-fi uh, warning vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, or uh, uh, avec moi. No, wrong, sorry. Wrong French handy-dandy term. Uh, my lexicon is all unrolodexed today uh, and getting lots of air file not founds that I'm not sharing with you because that's all behind the scenes stuff in, you know, the cockles of my mind. Uh, the inner cockles. Real word. Don't think I'm saying a gross thing. I'm not. That's a real actual uh, scientific term for things. It's the inner innards of your inner part, the cockles. Um, and uh, as a prankster comedian, commenteur uh, with nom de plume of theatery type performance art, social media critique, it's a little intense. It's a little mind boggling. I sit back in my chair after scanning the headlines, folks, which I'm sometimes even a little bit paranoidly afraid to even reference for fear of what? Retaliation of some kind, because they're all, right? It's all a web of dark darkness and dark money and whatnot. Not throwing accusations at anything, right? But uh, one could say that we're literally about to see a, 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 a live on TV uh, Rock'em, sock'em, robot, punch'em boxing match of, a, of an election year cycle for 2020 between two, all, arguably, I'm not trying to disparage either of these two real-life peoples, uh, and also in the cartoon version, in the comic book version of uh, my retro-futuristic uh, historical fiction narrative of what didn't happened but went worse in you know the in the the uh, raices of Trumptopia uh to start working in the Spanglish angle because that's really big later on in the future uh but you know as if it weren't now uh I just don't reference it a lot yet because you know I had to lay down a, a layer without it I digress uh too much self meta commentary about my process it's always been my problem as an artist I'm too much process and not enough result. In a world slowly sliding towards Trumptopia, you gotta pause and ask yourself, like, what, when, where, how do we know that the window's open and the audience is hearing, uh, you know, what might or might not be, I can't tell and I can't see them from here, migrant workers, uh, of the either variety of the many varieties that actually work, you know, landscaping work, blowing a very loud, I, although maybe you guys can't hear that at all, and then I sound like a jackass or a liar. But in my actual real life ear, um, I hear that dreaded engine noise, uh, and it's going away now, but I, I digress. I'll probably have to edit all of that out in post. Take 17. In a world sliding towards totalitarian Trumpopianum. I can't even say that with a straight face, you guys. If I was doing a stand-up comedy routine, forevermore I will be mildly scarred by the brilliant performance of and the and the searing relevance and also like both geopolitically and like interpersonally, like I always sort of in the dichotomy of what superheroes were your favorite, I always secretly had like a, and if I was a bad guy, I'd be the Joker. Because I'd be like, I'm a good guy, man. I'm just trying to thin out the herd. But that's, I, I digress. I don't believe in that. I'm expressly, both in real life and in my fiction, sort of the inoculant, inoculant? Inoculating, um, healthy healing, inverse opposite of what Joker is. If I can say that without getting sued by DC Universe. I'm not disparaging Joker. Forgive my mild paranoia. I'll explain. Put a pin in that. I'll, I'll explain it in a minute. Especially if you're new. None of this is making sense. But uh, don't sue me, Joker. Because in some somewhere in the multiverse, there's a real bunch of Jokers. Like actual, every v film version, every comic book version of the Joker that's ever been dreamt up. There's a there's a fractal iteration in the universe where you y'all made that dude actually happen. 
me sitting around doing all the things you made him do in your imaginations for reals because the infinite fractal mother womb matrix that is the mother womb of matrices makes all occur especially your sick movie fantasies so well done insert pin i really 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 want to do uh the incorrigible mr zeppo's totally irrelevant movie reviews epic deep dive into dc universe whoever produced warner brothers by the way warner brothers if nothing else i legit will love that movie forever this is straight up if i was a real movie critic i would be like i'm putting my writing utensils down my other paraphernalia down to swear to you dear listeners hands on a bible that opening sequence, as it as I saw it, I saw it on pay-per-view. I did not see it in the theaters. I wish I had. Didn't, wasn't, wasn't protesting it, wasn't boycotting it. Insert for the record, I am logistically, relatively a, a pacifist. I'm also a chaotic neutral, so I'm not like radically anti-gun. But I am, for those wondering, I'm not like, I am not take away the gun rights. I'm like, keep all the gun rights. But hold the gun industry and it's really obvious connection to the military industrial complex and the war profiteers, all accountable? Question mark? Is that a horrible thing to say? Uh, so I don't promote gun violence. I don't want to take anybody's guns away. And I don't always agree with art and gun violence. But holy shit balls. Is that a powerful movie? And significantly, for reals, you know, for, for, for five years and 10 years and 15 years, I want to be the first pseudo-pretend wannabe movie critic on the internet because I'm not a licensed movie critic. I don't know where you get a license to be a movie critic in Jumptopia, especially not in the 2121 version, right? Because sometimes, like, there's a remake of it, and then that makes me dig up the old version, the original. The original Warner Brothers... I just watched it on Spectrum TV pay-per-view. Nobody sue me, please. Um, that opening sequence through to the pan away from the kids. I don't, I don't want to spoiler it for anybody. But the kids beating up the sign twirler. Like, that opening sequence. I consider that and the and then it, like, you know, gets fuzzy. And then, you know, the, the movie. Oh, and then the title, right? Bam! The title. And then something else happens. Including, inclusive, maybe the afterbeat, which is sort of like a beautiful extension of, which is, which is a brilliant face acting slash clown performance. If I may, as a once legit international theater theatrical clown, that was brilliant, brilliant performance as someone in some kind of clown character. I think I can... I can speak on that with some, like, I'm not just bullshitting authority. That, like, it isn't everybody that can be really interestingly inhabiting. Because clown, insert a big fat red pin here, because I think I've talked about this before. And I don't mean to turn this into the episode. But clown is a, clown is a real thing. It's an archetype. And it doesn't exclusively belong to Warner Brothers or to the Joker or to the archetype that is what we reference with that licensed cartoon character. There's something meta about all clown, which is why there are people who have a, a fear of clown, why there are people who fetishize clown. It, and there's a line there that people take and cross and go into a department that I do not like and do not, officially for the record, ever have joked about or wanted to express or done in, that I know of knowingly in my life. Although people have accused me of it and it's bullshit. Uh, big divide, like, right? Like, but there's a, to get to the heart of that without getting caught in a weird mental spiral out of control derailment here. There's a spiritual clown archetype that's deep and ancient. The laughing man that's, that's legit and serious and is like anthropo, anthro, like anthropologically, anthropomorphically, and maybe even like Fro pre Freudian meta psychotherapeutically important, meaningful, 
and reasonable to discuss without getting sued by anybody who's ever made a Joker movie um, that we could call the Joker. That's like a meta archetype that that we and I'm not trying to couch it in the Wonder Brothers movie, but to finish paying the compliment and start stop thinking spirally, that opening sequence deserves, in my humble opinion, as a as a real life time movie fan, fanatic, enthusiast, movies can be cinema, can be art, whether there's violence in them or not. That opening sequence is brilliant and cinema gold and deserves to be in the top three of all time for now and for a hundred years from now until movies are some other thing so different that that can't be shot, can't be... And then I don't mean... And no shot-for-shot shot remake with other actors should ever be made. Because why? Because uh, until, until you can live it in it and feel the... Feelings of all the characters, which would dynamic radic. I'm not. Uh, I'm not pr- propositioning this, but I, f- I figure technologists and futurists, of which I think I can radically call myself one, as a as a fiction writer and as a you know fictional character that I RP in my creative process, development process for my own narrative fiction. Uh, when I am acting it out as a robot from the future that performs in a very clown-like performance way that's about psychology and the therapeutic comprehension that we have many masks that we utilize just to be one person. Uh, You know, that, holy shit, was mind-blowing. As as a piece of cinema, as like a piece of brain uh, dream co-creation, you know, beautiful movies take us away somewhere. And that opening sequence is meta-Freudianly, meta-psychotherapeutically art. And art can be darkly therapeutic or, or beautifully therapeutic or neutrally be- therapeutic. If you consider just that opening sequence plus the, the aftermath of, you know, that, that one facial moment, the cutaway is the end of it, right? Like, end of movie... Uh, as its own little chapter, as a chapter, and you just kind of fractally call that its own piece of art, if I may, should and might hopefully be up there, top three, best, most powerful, most in and of themselves, if you just sit with it and watch it and meditate on it, catharsis invoking, beautiful critique of and categorical like exactly what clown can be described as being meaningful in our post-contemporary lives you know dusting yourself off after getting the shit kicked out of you literally and figuratively sorry don't mean to make a spoiler alert and moving on despite the pain despite the um, the rage despite the emotions end it there just like being able to move forward and, and and move on and breathe and weep a little and put on the happy face and continue if we tie it off and don't invoke gun and death and chaos and darkness by itself is like wow beautiful right and can be while edgy and dark obviously cathartic and is that not my dear theater nerds <clears throat> pushing up of the theater nerd glasses And if this were live, I would look you all in the eye. Right now, in my theater nerd glasses voices. And then wink. In a theater nerd glasses kind of way. Platonic. Purely platonic. Is that not precisely what theater is about? Organically, according to the ancients, is it or is it not? Thank you for indulging me in that. And that is, uh, my friends, my Theatre Nerd Classes theatre critique voice, uh, which I may or may not be using more actively in the future. Because someone said to me, dude, aren't you like a king of voices and I was like no I wouldn't go that far and I'm not supposed to impersonate anybody says so right there in the EULA 
Uh, and I'm not impersonating anybody with my theater nerd, theater nerd glasses, theater nerd voice. That's me. Being me. When I'm a theater nerd, talking about theater. Once, while I was traveling through time, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, can't do that, can you? Not in real life. Ha <laughs> ha, say no more, say no more. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And I had tea with the Duke of Saxe-Meiningen. Name drop, sorry. Oh, you don't know who he is? Theater nerd, judge you face. <clears throat> The Joker then goes on to critique and rage uh, explain the phenomena and the character of the Joker and is arguably, I think, and I, I don't know where we're at in the uh, public debate because I'm right now not consuming anybody else's media, right? The sheer calculation, more media per year right now, and it's probably going to like do that weird fractal uh, super having, halving with like, as in like to halve, not to have, a, not to have a lisp or a speech impediment, but to cut in half, to halve. It's very hard to pronounce. That's why no one uses it. Uh, when you take something and like double its time in half, by half, uh, of development time, you know, like it's now, it takes you twice as less time or half as much time, uh, to, to do it. Uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. Of, of, of politics and, and, um, and life and commentary. What, what do we do? You know, this, this movie is really begging the question and arguably telling the story and being the best Batman movie ever, hands down. I don't know if anyone said that yet. If that's already been said a dozen times, forgive me. I don't mean to be derivative. I don't mean to be copycatting anybody. I've literally not heard one bit of content by anybody uh, because I can't afford the time, right? I mean, I have to when I do research. Don't get me wrong. I try to do my, due pro my process. But we create more content now than all of human history combined every year. And soon it'll be every half year and then it'll be every quarter and then it'll be every month and then it'll be every day and what shows are famous shows and trending shows will have some new mega scaled meaning because there'll be quite a bazillion times too much data and maybe not even enough eyeballs to read it all but before it gets to that crashing on itself sort of place i'd like to be an independent self-produced podcast King of podcasting, radio crazy nut job. I'm sorry, I shouldn't call myself that because that would be disparaging myself. And I'm not supposed to, it says so right there in the EULA. No disparaging of anybody. And I, I guess that would include my many selves. Neither me, myself, nor I shall be disparaged by any of my voices or my characters that I play on this radio theater box. And now, for something completely different. What the fuck was the point of today's show? Oh, right. Introducing the new characters and talking about what a crazy world we live in and agreeing with John Fugel saying. John Fugel saying? Never sure how to say his name because I've never been to his show live, never heard it said, uh, like, in front of me more than 17 times, which is how long it takes me to learn a new person's name. Digress. I kind of look up to this dude. I think that if we met randomly at a bar... We would hit it off, and he would want me not to know, not to realize who he is, which I wouldn't. If I met him at a bar in New York, especially at any point before I stopped drinking, because knock on wood, well, I guess I still am not, I haven't completed that process to say, and I'm not doing it any kind of official uh, capacity, but I do have an episode about that, and I, I intend to record an episode about that too. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not here to preach drinking's bad. Do what you want. It'll kill you. Everything kills you. But he made a, his own meme pointing a few things out about dear old great-grandpappy 
that's not true. He's is he a grandfather yet? No, I don't believe so. Right, uh, but dear old President Don J. Trump. And it reads, I know Donald Trump lied to us about raising six million for vets, but darn it, I like the way he just says what he thinks. John Fugel saying. And he posted that apparently four hours ago today, unless I'm wrong. And I'm not trolling him. That's also in the EULA. I'm just sharing his content because it's free to share on Facebook. And I think it's free to share on other social media platforms. And I think I'm allowed to share it if I read it uh, while I was recording my podcast. If I'm wrong about that, I didn't know, and I will gladly uh, cease and desist and uh, edit out and uh, re-align my show without getting it removed or banned yet. Please give me a warning first. I just don't think that, uh, I think it's cool, right? I think it is cool. I I read my own memes. I read other people's memes, and I credit them, but I also don't want to out them because I don't want to be perceived as trolling anybody because it literally says in the EULA of the platform that I use, Sprecher.com. Thumbs up, by the way. If you want to start your own podcast, go to Sprecher.com and get this app. Especially if you like don't know anything about audio engineering. It's the easy, it's the, it's like, I legit love it, or else I wouldn't be using it, contemplating about monetizing my show on it, to see if it can, you know, catapult itself into, you know, its own thing. Other people are doing so. I digress. Uh, it is not fallacy to say that the president has been fact-checked, I think, 15,500 and some odd times. The number varies, right? And so I'm not trying to fact-check him in this current moment. And uh, it wouldn't be a free country. It wouldn't be a real uh, uh, representative representational dem- democratic republic anymore if we weren't allowed to critique, especially waving the banner of lampoon comedy and satire, whoever's in office, because everyone does, right? The things they get away with on national TV, as we all know, commonly, in the culture phenom that is uh, the country we all love and share together and want to truly be not just great, but awesome, and uh, and honorable, and uh, I don't know, you know, not insane, and maybe not run by a person who, who lies more than a thousand times a day. Uh, that's not true. That would be a lie of me to say he does not lie a thousand times a day. He does lie multiple times a day. That would be accurate. I need to go and edit that out in post. Um, I was thinking about it earlier today while warming up and getting ready to maybe record this podcast that I'd love to remix that, maybe use a different picture of the of President Trump or maybe um, a picture of the White House. But is that rude? I don't want to disrespect the office. The office is something that we all should, uh, without getting too caught up in political ideological infighting about which idea of government is best because that in and of itself is an ego trap right and without become radical becoming i do i am not a radical anarchist i don't want like the joker i don't want to watch the whole place burn to the ground and i don't want everyone shooting each other in the face in fact i want sensible reasonable common sense regulation that involves a lot of background checking and a lot of mental health care for people who are suffering mental health illness, not neglect and abuse and marginalization and and the criminalization of so that gun violence becomes the way it all goes down. And uh, we should be able to do that through collective uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to say bargaining, but collective civic organization and not billion-dollar uh, political campaign cycles. But, you know, call me crazy. Call me as crazy as good old... Um, oh, crap. I had his meme up yesterday, and I forgot to whether or not I pinned it or saved it. 
But uh, free speech is still a thing, right? I like to say free speechy things all the time that people find rather challenging. Uh, and I use it in a sort of intermeta way because I, A, I'm sort of creating content for my books that I'm not going to write because it's referenced to a radio show and a podcast that someone makes uh, in the 2020s. And, uh, etc. An actual real free speech critique of media and applause of media. I applaud John Fusel, Fugel Sange? No. John Fugel Sang. I hate, I'm not trying to be a dick about your name. I honestly can't pronounce it. Every time I come at it, even though I'm a fan of yours, I'm generally a fan. Uh, genuinely. Like, I want to write a fan fiction sketch comedy scene of me running into John Fugelsang um, in the future, like, in, like, 2022, just to keep it theoretical now, because it's literally 2020 now. Uh, and him sort of not recognizing me right away, but then recognizing me as that weirdo from the internet show about, about Zen and politics. Can that be what my, you know, like, under the free speech banner of uh, political commentary, parody, satire, and the free expression of religion, of my own spiritual faith, uh, which is organized religion free, decentralized spiritual practice of Zen and politics in some sort of transplanted, you know, healing of politics and updating of Zen so that if we can deal with politics, uh, then that's where I'm at and that's what the show is for everybody who's confused, if you're new or if you're old and you're still confused. That's what the show is. Uh, yeah. And if I were to meet him in New York, not Trump, Fugel saying, I would talk about this meme because I want to talk about this meme forever and about how I love, like the collaborative impulse in me is to like write, make it a double-sided, like, it's Trump two-faciness. And on one side, John Fugelsang says that. And on another side, I do a thing where, like, it's the list of all the things you could insert there. And I put brackets over um, raising $6 million for vets and an asterisk, right? And on the other side of the two-faced... Uh, who's that Greek god, two-faced Greek god? Because I would make it look a little bit like him, but also a little bit like Trump. And then on the other side, I would just be, it would just be like a red asterisk and brackets and uh, a, a long list of all the things he's ever lied about. And on that side, the meme would, would say, oh, at the bow tie under, chin, under the chin of Trump, it would be and, and it would be like Mr. the incorrigible Mr. Trump. Because I time displacedly created a collab hyper internet collaborative meme piece of art right didn't i couldn't i have had somehow uh and is that valid am i allowed to do that it, it does it is it work i'm asking this theoretically i don't want actual lawyers weighing in if you're a lawyer and you're listening to my show and you write to me on social media please disclose to me that you're a lawyer and for whom and if anyone needs me to like edit a show so that it is in higher more tighter compliance of the law, please let me know without like ruining my life first because I did, my mom always told me, you should be a lawyer. That's not what my mother sounded like. That wasn't me trying to impress her or impersonate her or do an impression of her. That was me having a weird like trying to shift gears vocally and failing moment. Can't quite call it a hiccup. It's more like I wanted to, I couldn't decide if I should keep it at the same tone and volume level or if I should shift it down. Talk about my mother, you know, in a mournful kind of make it soulful voice. Uh, and it just went instead. Uh, I digress. She always told me, you should be a lawyer. And if not a lawyer, you should be a radio D DJ because you've got, you've got the personality for both. 
And if she didn't ever actually say that, I may be sort of self-indulgently fantasized about her saying that. And regardless, that's what the character, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo, fictional character, as DJ host slash podcast weirdo in 1987 says about his grandmother, and then also as gramophone, underground gramophone gramcaster, because there was an underground gramophone railroad you didn't know about back in the spiritual seven, not the seven, I don't want to go back as far back as seven. When was the gramophone invented? So that I don't sound like an idiot. Um, don't know. Put a pin in that. Do the research when I come back through on, in post on this. What, uh, somewhere in a cool, interesting, it makes sense as a fractal unfolding, there's an iteration. And I won't actually get a gramophone. Although, if I ever get like a big budget and I'm doing the movie version of this, there's totally a scene, right? Like, cut to... Insert correct date here, 1742, 1899, I don't know. Whichever the correct date for final production, post-production, blah, 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 is. Where the incontrovertible Mr. Zeppo, I always wonder, should I play with the unnecessary, absurdist descriptor, the part of my name, or just play with a weird first name and keep Zeppo, or how should I do it? Because in every iteration of the character, there's got to be something that's, that's the same and something that's different. Or the, for the name game to warp. Work. Not warp. Maybe also warp. But in that year, in the attic, in the soundproofed attic of his creepy Victorian, but not totally creepy yet, because it's like in the height of the trend, so it's all bright green and purple, um... You know, totally Zeppo colors, Victorian house that's like a maze built by an engineer and a house architect, crazy married couple back in the, in you know, in the very, very early days of Victorian architecture. And they were like way too edgy Victorian. They were trying to push steampunk Victorian to a place that was like laughable in America. But there was also a spiritual movement going on in this fictional uh, uh, narrative fiction timeline. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Zeppo, who was a entheogenic mystic and technologist and futurist and aspired to be very much like, insert name here, a, you know, some fictional author that is like based on Jules Verne, but is, you know, a fictional take so that I'm not getting sued by the Jules Verne Society. Uh, but can be acknowledged in the documentary of, of my art making as obviously being anchored in Jules Verne, that, uh, you know, it is echo chamber thing. And his thing is making these gramophone, these mini gramophone uh, roles that he calls gram casts. And, uh, and he's invented a mini gramophone player, right? That's smaller than your pockets uh, the itty bitty gramophone and he's working on technology to, so that it's multiple each little pod that he sends uh, in the secret underground distribution like real grassroots because that's what we had right when we didn't have the internet but we still had nation states we had grassroots underground network of people who were willing to distribute content across the state and and across the country of places to share the idea, right? Because what else is society but the sharing of ideas, especially those ideas that help shape how we do things in society? To, uh, for context, for those who don't know, I'm going to f fictionalize a real reference uh, in the in terms that in that deep history in like the roots of Trumptopia chapters I'm trying to like correlate with what seems to be 60 40 odds up in favor of being a real life book and I hope no one gets offended for me referencing this or that no one sues me over it etc uh, this is just common knowledge right it's stuff you've heard on the internet there's a book in the Library of Congress 
And I may or may not have already talked about it on my podcast. Uh, and I may or may not continue to talk about it on my podcast. And I may or may not en- enshrine this question mark reference, questionable reference to this book I personally have never seen in real life. But if I ever magically find myself through my own um, success able to schedule a special private tour of the Library of Congress, I will request to read this book. I would love to sit for uh, however long it takes that they will allow me to, to sit in the Library of Congress and read this book, white gloves and all, to protect it. Um, But in 1890-something... Arguably, it must have been in 1879, 78, and thereabouts, that uh, the author, whose name totally escapes me right now, and it's not Donald Trump, wrote the book, called, book <clears throat> take 74. In 1890, someone whose name currently escapes me, insert name of author here, apparently wrote a real book that got actually published and sold well enough to be cataloged in the National Library of Congress, which keeps a sampling of, you know, popular fiction of the day and other uh, things published in the public domain for the purposes of keeping them and tracking them uh, and their, and monitoring their, their, uh, their, uh, what are they called? Their content rights, right? Other thing I'm being paranoid about. Um, and also being able to, how else are we able to announce when something, you know, has reached the required parameters that it becomes open public domain and anyone can then rewrite it, reprint it, reproduce it, and remix it and rework with it and, you know, do, do derivative art inspired by it without fear of anybody ever suing, Right. Uh, so that they, you can maybe then, you know, do just enough to license your own and then, blah, blah. Um, I don't know what this is and I'll have to look it up because I don't remember what those, where that boundary sits right now, but it is 2020. And if in eight, I don't know if someone, hold, if someone is holding active movie rights and licensing rights, I don't mean to infringe upon them, but I mean to read this book and hope to be the guy that comes up with a movie about it and or write my own work where it's a book that is referenced in my movie and becomes a movie in my universe because in my universe, I make a movie about it. Hopefully no one's already made Hope to pray to God no one's making a movie about it. Calling dibs now. But Baron Trump's marvelous underground adventure and I think the second book is titled The Last President. And in these books, if I'm not mistaken, like a little boy named Baron Trump grows up to want to be, you know, ruler of the world. Uh, Not mocking anybody directly, uh, just using a funny voice. And apparently succeeds. So I want to write a dystopian near future historical timeline, you know, twister genre mashup in which Trumptopia does indeed in, in the not too distant future, after a couple of decades, become uh, something that is crossing that line and really steaming right into being a legacy uh, family empire dictatorship and doing it poorly, doing it inspired by true life events, inspired by true life people. Is that horrible? Am I covered by, uh, I mean, plenty of people mock Donald Trump and get away with it, obviously. I mean, NBC does. Quite a bit. Sorry, am I allowed to say the words NBC? Was I allowed to declare my opinion that the the opening sequence of Joker should go down in history right now as one of the most beautiful, meaningful, and in, like in, as its own little special thing, like sickly sweet, dark but potentially cathartic uh, in a good way uh, openings to a movie in a really long time. This being a very dark and violent and grotesque movie, which I have my own counter arguments against, but also, wow, and also, uh, it's a stark warning, right? And so is Orwell's 
1984. So so was what's his name's um God bless it. It's horrible and it's toxic. And you know, when people like it for the wrong reasons and sick of, you know, get a little bit sick, twisted, thrill ride addicted to it for all the wrong reasons, it's not a movie that you want to show to young people and dramatize and then, you know, hyper normalize. Uh, but Clockwork Orange, it's a warning, right? Like, don't let society become this way. Warning. So, what a confluence of events, right? People are literally... The first headline I saw, Politico. I'm sure Politico won't mind if I give them a few more eyeballs, right? I'm a, I'm a social media influencer, guys. So if you've never heard of Politico, dude, like, two thumbs up, check them out. Unless I'm a total sheeple, they kind of really try to be independent, not too lefty, slanty, righty, wingy. And they're as about as corruption-free as any company can be in this toxic-as-fuck world we live in, right? Or I'm dead wrong. Who knows? Maybe they're not the good guys. Maybe they're dead straight up the bad guys, and they're a psyop. I don't know. Not trying to disparage anybody. Nobody knows. Just trying to say, the whole world's a psyop. Uh, I might have to edit that, or at least bleep it. Top Intel office lawyer who handled Ukraine whistleblower complaint resigning. That's their headline. Go give them clicks and eyeballs. Let them earn their, their dollar bills. And a sampling of things, you know, the Democrats spent $10 million bashing Trump. I did not just quote the exact title, but that's, that's what they did. Politics is crazy and expensive. Uh, and we have to stop and ask. I've always said that pacifism, healing, sitting down and meditating literally and figuratively and like individually and as community and as neighbors and as family and as political parties and as politicians and as, you know, like for reals, yo, like everyone sit down and meditate um, might be what activates a healing, transformative cure. It might not. I don't know. I've rambled out of control, and I haven't talked about any things I want to talk about. And that's a-okay with me. I might be going crazy. I might be doing this on purpose. I'm definitely not uh, advocating violence in any way, shape, or form. As I presume, neither is Warner Brothers, right? I'm not disparaging them. But holy shit... No, no, uh, no, uh, uh, spoiler, I think, alert needed, right? That and many uh, superhero movies, the violence is, like, epic and kind of intense and kind of, uh, you know, reaching a next-level graphicness that is wowzers, right? It would have been unimaginable unimaginable is that correct yes uh 45 years ago right or maybe not i don't know maybe i'm maybe i think i'm a theater nerd but i'm not as big of a movie buff as i could be uh but it's intense yo and obviously horror at all has always pushed the limits and continues to do so and I'm not anti-horror. I'm not about to try and censor anybody's art. But I do wonder, you know, where is the line? And what do we do about it in terms of impact on our souls, on our psyche, on our, our inner... Let's put it this way. I wasn't kidding when I mean that there's like a spiritual dynamic. I think everyone has within them cosmic archetype as a thing, as a process, as a phenomena. So you have many cosmic archetypes. Arguably, there might be 12. That's a pretty handy-dandy number. And or a baker's dozen. And or some other magical number or a fractal infinity of them. Who knows? I don't pretend 
to know absolute statements about that. But I do know with a high level of certainty that it it can be argued that there's a perceptual phenomena of internal facets to our minds and that each of them have a character and a sort of theme and a sort of role and a common ground meta-ness to them and that we can, as others philosoph philosophically have uh, labeled them, can use the word archetypes, right? Uh, and that indeed we all have the fool within us uh, and uh, it is up to us whether we we abuse and neglect the fool within us until it is so toxic that it cannot do the healing thing that the fool slash laughing man slash wizard, right? Everyone can become a wizard for good or uh, we need another word. What's, there wasn't, there's another word that I liked from literature for, that wasn't wizard. It wasn't witch. Somebody out there knows it and is screaming it into their uh, pillow. Um, not that I believe in wizards and witches. Not that I disbelieve in wizards and witches. Not, and I certainly most definitely do not judge people who label themselves as wizards and witches. In fact, I'm a little witchy witch myself. Uh, let's not get into it, right? Let's not fight about it. Let's self-radicalize for peace about it instead of the other way around. If we keep making art about how we choose to self-destroy ourselves as warning to not self-destroy ourselves, what can we do to not repeat that which we have made the warning about? Question mark. And that is the latest madness from behind the orange wall. Thank you for listening to GMT, a special segment of the Almost Daily Zencast. Stay woke, Trumptopia. Stay, Stay woke, 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 woke. And now, DJ Z, MAGA Funk Intro, The Early Years, Volume 2. Tune in for more.
coming up on the Almost Daily Zencast. The incorrigible Mr. Zeppo asks, What the fuck are we doing and why are we doing it? 